Welcome everyone to the ISAT Senior Symposium of 2018. This is Levi Bain. He'll be showing his project for you today. Enjoy. All right. Thank you everybody for coming. As you said, my name is Levi. I'm a senior here, obviously. I am an ISAT major, environment concentration. Um, a little bit of history. I didn't start off with this capstone project. I uh, started with a different sort of efficiency monitoring project. Um, started that in the fall of last year when I started this major kind of fell through on me last fall. I was lucky enough to switch over onto this project and I'm looking forward to showing all that today. So my abstract, um, so Vine and Fig is a community center here in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Um, they're a nonprofit as well and sort of a support center for the area. Um, their director serves on a committee formed by city council in Harrisonburg called the uh, Environmental Performance Standards Advisory Committee and currently they're developing an environmental um, performance standards action plan and the purpose of this capstone is to analyze uh, emission sources from JMU and EMU, specifically sources uh, scope one and two, and to use that information to consult um, them through the formation of this plan. All right, so I put this map up just to sort of show where EMU and JMU are uh, in respect to Harrisonburg. Most of you all are already familiar with this, but there it is. So a little more information about Vine and Fig. They're one and two of a uh, sustainable community set up by a uh, new community project, and that's a nationwide faith-based organization um, that predominantly focuses on sort of like progressive goals, uh, environmental goals, um, and certain civil rights, um, environmental justice issues as well. Um, I went to Vine and Fig and I met Tom. I was really impressed by what they have going on there. Uh, I knew that I wanted to be involved and wanted to figure out how I could contribute to furthering their role um, as a sustainable living center. So my contribution to this, um, just to sort of further distinguish my involvement here, uh, I got to break down a little bit like chain of command who's involved in making this plan. So uh, as I said, they're forming a standards plan here in Harrisonburg for environmental performance. Um, they had a edit to their overall plan in 2011 um, that called for environmental performance standards to be created. So uh, city council set up a committee and Tom Benevento, who is director of Biden Fig, starts on that committee. And the goal of providing him with this information through consulting um, is to enable him to push for a more progressive uh, startup for this uh, plan. Because this is the first time that Harrisonburg is doing something like this. So the goal is to get as much information and make it as progressive as possible from the beginning so that we can have good changes overall. Uh, so this is a breakdown of greenhouse gases and the scopes that they're separated into. Um, you hear emissions intensity and it's, it's, it's an equivalence based on metric tons of CO2. So you have various different types of greenhouse gas emissions um, and just for the sake of simplicity they're compared to CO2. Um, so they have seven greenhouse gases listed here, you have CO2 methane, um, nitrogen dioxide, hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, sulfur hexafluoride, and uh, nitrogen trifluoride. And these are all separated into three scopes. As I mentioned, I'll be focusing on scopes one and two, uh, but just to distinguish between them for y'all, scope one is direct and it's from emissions from the, oh, sorry about the, emissions from the operations uh, of an institution. So if you have purchased, not purchased electricity, but if you have combustion on site like Jamie used to have, then that is included in scope one. Scope two is indirect, but it's associated with the activities of an institution. So if you buy third party electricity, that is included in scope two. Scope three is also indirect, but it's slightly, it's more separated from the activities. Um, so an example of this is like study abroad, air travel um, would fall under scope three emissions. So it's more abstract and not as connected. Um, and again, these are all put into metric ton CO2 equivalent. So methodology for this, um, I looked at 
AMU and JMU, as well as the University of Virginia and Virginia Tech, um, as well as three communities in Virginia, um, town of Blacksburg, city of Charlottesville, and city of Roanoke. Um, and the goal is to first develop sort of a quantitative look at these. So looking at just general emissions across scopes and then from there develop a qualitative analysis of them. So figuring out what qualities of those institutions, of those communities um, account for the changes in emissions that you see. And then ideally from there take what works and use and what doesn't and you know to avoid that. Um, so quantitative analysis, again, just numbers uh, for predominantly started off with universities. Um, JMU, EMU, UVA, Virginia Tech, as I mentioned. Um, JMU and EMU are particularly relevant to Harrisonburg because they are part of the emissions that, that uh, Harrisonburg has to account for. So it's an advantage that they're already, um, they've already been kept track of over a couple of different years. Um, and UVA and Virginia Tech is included in here for uh, like a standard comparison against JMU and EMU um, to see what other schools, uh, how they stack up in this sort of uh, comparison. So the reporting platform used here, uh, STARS, which is, it's, a, it's, it's part of uh, ACI, which is the Association of Advancement of Science and, or Sustainability, I'm sorry, of Sustainability in Higher Education. And STAR stands for uh, Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Reporting System. So it's a it's a self-reporting system. You enter your data, and then you get a, a grade corresponding to that. Uh, so as I mentioned, all these are from STARS. Um, these are the four uh, universities compared in Virginia. And you can see that certain institutions start off in different places, and they choose different goals to sort of meet what they're trying to accomplish. Um, and you have varying uh, degrees of years that they've been recorded over, as you can see. Um, so you can see goals for, for JMU, uh, they're on track as of now. Um, but then you can look across and see Virginia Tech is getting close. Um, but it, the goals that you pick can make you look uh, better or worse depending on where you start off from. And there's a, there's a further example of that when we look at um, Blacksburg emissions as a, as a uh, community. So this is the second table for universities. It shows um, percentage reductions across different um, different units. Uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's metric ton CO2 equivalent. Um, then that is also compared against uh, thousand gross square foot um, energy energy intensity, um, full time equivalent student body and weighted campus user. Um, so full-time equivalent and weighted campus user, that deals predominantly with um, sort of the demographic makeup of schools, so how many people are on campus permanently, how many people are commuting, vice versa. Um, and when you look at um, energy use intensity, that comes down uh, more so to space, just like 1,000 uh, gross square feet, except for energy use intensity, they consider what the space is being used for. So. Um, EUI would be different for like a laboratory than it would be for this classroom. Um, obviously a lab's going to use more energy. Uh, so the communities we looked at, Town of, Black, Town of Blacksburg, Charlottesville, and Roanoke, as I mentioned before, uh, these are all comparable in size and region to Harrisonburg, so they're useful for comparison. Um, they also provide potential sort of examples of successes and failures. They've been, they've been keeping track of these things um, for a, a fair amount of time and we haven't been keeping track of it at all so it's it's a good sort of uh, example of, of what can be done and what should be avoided. Um, so I've, I've made tables for the communities as well. Um, here you can see this is what I was speaking about with Blacksburg uh, the goals can make a big difference as to what you're going for so you, you notice here they have 80 percent reduction of 1990 levels by 2050 so obviously 1990 levels are going to be lower than present day levels whereas you have other communities that are just trying to reduce their baseline year levels so that makes a big difference and you can see that in the in the following graph their following table rather so you can see Blacksburg grew in percentage and uh, based on performance, but again, that's compared to a 1990 base level. So that's um, a lot different than looking at Charlottesville and Roanoke. Let's 
So next steps for this um, is to transition into qualitative. Um, you can see um, as you start to break down these percentages of change and um, emissions intensity, you start to get a feel for what has been done and why that's effective. Um, and when you look at the action plans that these municipality or that these communities and universities have established, um, you can get a feel for what they're putting in place that's allowing for these changes to happen, and then <coughs> from there make recommendations for Harrisonburg as they start to develop this plan. Um, this is sort of an example of, of a way to break it down as we move into, into um, qualitative. This is a, a breakdown of Roanoke's uh, community emission levels. So you can see, just makes it easier to sort of figure out what needs to be focused on and what doesn't. Uh, obviously, waste isn't making a huge portion of this pie, whereas commercial is the largest. And this is an example of Blacksburg's trajectory plan for their um, for their action plan. They have a they have a fairly nuanced plan that they've collaborated with Virginia Tech to create. Um, and for us, where we are right now is before the first box. So we're at the beginning of the era, and we have a lot of different things that we need to accomplish to move forward to make this um, make this a continuing thing. Um, and that's why I spoke earlier about the stress for uh, environmentally progressive uh, notions being used in this plan because we're starting it off and we have an opportunity to make it um, to make it sort of a compilation of successes um, from other areas around us if we if we look at what they've done so far um, so yeah that's that sums it up i will be working in may to complete um, qualitative analysis, quantitative analysis is displayed in part in here. Um, I'm going to give like an acknowledgement or two and then questions if that's all right. Um, but yeah, I want to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Kaufman and Dr. Roger Cartman. They're amazing, very smart people, very helpful in this process. As I mentioned, I had some hang up and had to switch over, so I really appreciate that. Um, my family that's here today, y'all have been super supportive. That especially this past month has been great. Um, it's been super helpful having all y'all support. Um, so yeah, questions. Anybody have any questions? If you're looking at the emissions inventory for uh, Blacksburg, Charlottesville, and yeah. Harrisonburg, respectively. Do are the universities within the city um, included in the in the city's inventory, or is the emissions per in, per university? Uh, it's only they sometimes they from what I've seen they they kind of it depends on where it is so Charlottesville for instance included UVA's which makes a big difference because I mean UVA has a it's a three million square foot hospital so that's a big amount of energy that's being used so that was included in their calculation but they made note that it was included so a lot of times if a big source is included they'll make note of it um, Blacksburg works like in conjunction with Virginia Tech and it's included in theirs. Um, I have a calculation in here that uh, factors in the, the uh, emissions intensity with the University of Virginia. I took that out of calculating the Charlottesville um, data, but it, it sort of seems like it depends, but for the most part, if they do include it, they definitely make a note that they did include are it. Are there action plans, like you put up Blacksburg's climate action plan, are there plans linked in any way, or they, do they both have individual action plans? Yeah, um, I'm actually, I'm going to go and click on this table because you can kind of see a similarity between the two um, that I forgot to note. So I mentioned that Blacksburg worked in conjunction with Virginia Tech and they sort of did their own uh, plan and uh, their own sort of inventory. Um, but Charlottesville and Roanoke both used ICLEI um, and their reports are incredibly similar both in format and content. Um, and you can see their their commitments are similar and even their goals are similar by increment. Uh, the year is a little bit different, but Charlottesville and Roanoke share a lot in common because this is something that is, it, obviously it's done, but also obviously it's, it's, it's there's kinks being worked out and it's not constant across. So like Virginia Tech is different when you compare it to Charlottesville's like ICLEI's like standard format report.
But yeah, Charlottesville and Roanoke definitely used um, very similar reports, and then Blacksburg sort of did its own. They worked with a um, with a professor in multiple classes in Virginia Tech. Anybody else in question?